Welcome to another edition of Heather and Jeff's Daily Diary. In this edition, Jeff's going to witter on about his gardening philosophy. And then I'm going to show you a cheap and easy way to propagate cuttings for planters and tubs. And finally, for you dahliaholics, Jeff's found a clip, an old clip, of the uh, garden and the dahlias in full bloom. Hi again. It's mid-February. I wasn't planning to make another video again this month, but a TV programme I watched the other night prompted me to do so. It was one of those TV makeover programmes where a young couple spent quite a lot of money transforming a perfectly serviceable back lawn into what they called a, an outside room. I've always considered gardening to be a bit of a journey and I've always wanted the flexibility to do what I want without any permanent structures getting in the way. And I've found ways and means of doing this without spending a lot of money. I was greatly influenced in my thought processes by a guy called Jeff Hamilton, who was the chief presenter on a programme called BBC Gardener's World in the 1970s and 80s. He encouraged people to try new things and showed you lots of ways of doing things without spending a lot of money. Over the years I've tried all sorts of things. Every year is a new project. Firstly I started with different types of vegetables but as I got a bit older I decided to branch out into flowers. I went through a phase of growing annuals, then I tried perennials, then I tried shrubs. So it was only relatively recently that I branched out into dahlias. But whatever I chose to grow, I found a way to do it that didn't cost me the earth. So in these videos I hope to show you to how to grow things relatively cheaply and to encourage you to try doing different things to try different varieties of plants in the knowledge that if you don't like them you can do something differently next year without having spent a lot of money When we moved here in 1977 the garden was full of weeds I read somewhere that the best way to clear up a garden and to eradicate weeds was to plant potatoes. I got the local farmer to deliver me a load of cow manure. I dug it into the soil, then planted potatoes. We had a really good crop. I bagged them all up and put them into our garage to store them for the winter. Unfortunately, it was a very cold winter and I lost the lot through frost. That was my first lesson in gardening, that you win some and you lose some and you just have to get used to it. Earlier this month I showed you inside my greenhouse. What I didn't tell you is that actually it's two separate greenhouses that have bolted together. I got them both second hand, both the same model and bolted them together. So now I've got a 20 foot greenhouse that didn't cost me very much at all. Interestingly enough, last night I went on, on the internet on eBay and found that there are lots and lots of greenhouses being auctioned off for very little. There were quite a few good ones auctioning off for less than £100 each. It struck me that the middle of winter is probably a very good time to buy a greenhouse second hand. Having got the greenhouse built, I then needed some staging to grow things on. Rather than go out and buy expensive aluminium staging, I decided to make my own. I made some trestles. Here are a couple of made out of three pieces of wood. They've lasted me for over 20 years. I use another old table as a trestle. And balanced on top of the trestles, are some old doors that I got out of a skip. While I'm in the greenhouse, let me show you my plant pots. Obviously, to grow hundreds of dahlias, you need hundreds of plant pots. But I didn't pay any money for these plant pots. Rather, I get them from a community garden where people bring along their old pots to exchange with other people. I've also acquired them from friends in exchange for dahlia tubers. Let me tell you about my hedges. I planted this Leylandi hedge about 40 years ago before Leylandi became popular. 
I went to a specialist Leylandi nursery, bought 10 plants and, and I, get to, I got talking to the guy who grew them and he told me how to propagate them. Within a couple of years they got enough Leylandi plants to surround the whole garden. Now I know that over the years Leylandi have got a bad name, but I don't think this particular hedge looks too bad. As long as you keep it in control, it does a good job. This little oak tree was grown from an acorn. This conifer cost me about 50 pence about 20 years ago. One loan for one four pound box of grass seed. This is called an abutilon. I got it as a cutting from a friend and it keeps flowering all summer long. It's even flowering now. It'll have to be cut back in about April. So I hope I've got across my point that the basic infrastructure for a garden needn't cost you a great deal, particularly if you're prepared to wait and take your time. The same goes for the flowers in the garden. If you can find ways and means of propagating your own plants, it needn't cost a great deal. I'll start with showing you how we take cuttings of a lot of the, f the plants we use uh, in tubs and pots. I mentioned in my last video that I like to buy starter plants early in the spring as soon as possible. These are some Nemesias, some Lobelias and one Biddens. Heather's now going to show you how we take these cuttings. This is a windowsill propagator. It's just a small seed tray together with a plastic see-through lid. The compost is just normal potting compost mixed with a little bit of extra sand and some perlite. These are some Argyranthemum cuttings that I've already taken. So this is an Amicia. I can see five potential cuttings on here. Ideally each one should be about an inch long. And you need to bury them just below the leaf axles. But first you have to remember to take off the bottom two pairs of leaves. Then you trim down the remaining leaves to reduce transpiration. So you've now got your little cuttings that are now ready to pot up. Similarly, a lobelia. Now a Biden's, or perhaps Biden's, now is that the is the U.S. president. So that's them all potted up. In fact there are around 50 cuttings in there and there are still plenty of shoots on the mother plants to make more if we need them. I'm not saying that all these will survive but I think the majority will. All we need to do now is to put the lid on and place them in a tray near the window. Ideally you want to find a position on a windowsill where you get some sunlight but not lots otherwise the plants will wilt. Even if the only position you can find is in full sun, you can always provide them with a bit of shade when it's at its hottest. The lid provides a nice microclimate. You don't need to water them, the water stays within the container. Before now I've been away for two weeks and come back and they've still been fine. 
now I'm going to show you how I grow seeds of the Vena Rigida. It's supposed to be winter hardy, but who knows whether these roots will have survived the cold winter. I bought one packet of seeds a few years ago, and ever since I've been taking seeds from it at the end of each season. I particularly like the way that the blue of the verbena contrasts with the yellow argyranthemums at the front of the border. I sow the seeds into a mixture of potting compost, sand and a bit of perlite. Over the years I've found that the seeds of verbena rigida are quite difficult to germinate and take quite a while to grow, so I start them early in February. Now this bit might surprise you. I find that they do better if you fool them into believing that they've been through a winter. So for a couple of months I keep them in the fridge. Sow the seeds thinly over the top of the compost. There's no need to cover them up. And now there's going to come another bit that will probably surprise you. I read somewhere that if you use ground cinnamon to spread over the top of your newly sown seeds it's less likely, they're less likely to damp off. I've tried this for a year or two now and I think the method works. Finally, cover them up and put them on a bright windowsill and leave them until they start to grow. And for my next trick I'm going to show you how to grow fuchsia cuttings in a coffee jar. This is a variety of fuchsia called Pink Fantasia. This is a coffee jar, the lid and a small pot of compost. This is all you need to make a mini propagator. Take a cutting from the mother plant and take the bottom two leaves away uh, and then cut the top two leaves in half. We've done this with uh, three cuttings but even in a tiny jar you can get about eight cuttings they don't mind being crowded these cuttings need to go in the small pot now the compost is damp but not uh, soaking they need a uh, a tiny hole to be firmed in and it doesn't matter if they're sitting on the soil they're quite happy. This little pot we then put into the lid of the coffee pot and then the uh, top the jar is then screwed on tightly creating a microclimate this then needs to go on a, a, a windowsill, avoiding too much sun. Now as promised folks, here's a, bid a video I made in 2014 of our back garden. I never published it on YouTube, probably because an aeroplane flew over halfway through it and made a lot of noise. So I'll just talk you through what you're going to be able to see. The pink and white flowers at the front of the bed there are, are argyranthemums. I fell out with pink argyranthemums because they always faded. At the front of the border there is a hosta which I've now dug up and planted something more interesting. At the front of the bed on the right hand side of the lawn are some yellow argyranthemums mixed with the verbenas, the blue verbenas that I've just been planting seeds of. Surrounding the edges of the border there are red and white bedding begonias. And this overexposed bit is probably another reason why I never put this video on YouTube. The pink cactus daily there is called Parkland Rave, which is one of my favourites. And I always grow lots of this one called Blight and Softer Gleam. It's a very good 
uh, small decorative. That one's called Lillian Marston. And that one is called Pianella, a cactus type. That is called Witterman Superba, and it is a superb flower. For the life of me, I can't remember what that bow one's called. That one's called Barbary Melody. And Holly Hill Black Widow. I'm going to focus now on one at the tall growing one. It's called Holly Houston. That white one is called High Debut. It's a very good dahlia. And finally, that's called Clearview Sundance. So that's about it for this month, folks. Not all of the filming has been done in our garden. I wonder if you can guess which was the different location. An RHS Gold Star Award for the person who can uh, tell me which it was. I hope that you tune in next month. We're going to show you what goes on underneath our duvet. <laughs> The duvet that Heather's referring to is this one. Underneath these covers is a big box containing all our dahlia tubers and that's where they've been overwintering. When the weather warms up a bit in March we'll be taking the covers off to find out how the dahlia tubers have survived over winter. It's always a bit tense. You wonder which, ones, which varieties have survived okay and which ones have rotted and we'll be going to the big dahlia compost heap in the sky. Finally, in the last video I told you how I've broken my wrist. Thank you for all your good wishes. I'm pleased to say that it's feeling quite a bit better and fingers crossed... <laughs> and fingers crossed, I think I should be okay for the growing season.